Anyway, this is not the first time I attend the SWAPO Congress. So it is just added to other experience. Uh, maybe the different from me is that uh, I was one of those who were campaigning for one of the top four positions with specific reference to the position of the vice president. So, and what I have learned is that uh, a democracy is uh, getting its root in the management of swap or activities as we have seen from the time of the preparation of the Congress up to the Congress itself. So you could see that uh, the people, part members, were really eager to participate in the Congress in the preparation as well as in the Congress itself. And that is what I believe made the Congress to be a great success. And now that you've been voted the Sopo Vice President, what are the top things on your priority list that you want to see change? Anyway, as a, a Vice President, uh, that is a position which is in line with the party constitution. And uh, the part constitution is very clear that uh, the vice president will be the principal uh, advisor to the president and uh, to perform uh, any duties that will be assigned to the vice president by the president. Uh, definitely in uh, my advising capacity, I am also guided by SWAPO program, and at this stage, I can refer to the SWAPO election manifesto of uh, 2014, because uh, that will remain our operational program until another election manifesto is set up. And the good thing is that when you look at the SWAPO election manifesto and you compare it to NDP 5, and the Harambe Prosperity Plan, they are all complementing one another. So as a, a vice president, uh, I will be working closely with the president in overseeing the implementation of this program. And the end result is to eradicate poverty uh, in our country. And they are already targeted the programs, uh, which I fully support. Uh, which uh, some of them really are made to enable us to break the bridge. Uh, for example, when it comes to poverty, you know that in Namibia we have poverty in rural areas and we have poverty in urban and pre-urban. And as an immediate measures to address the poverty in pre-urban, uh, in urban and pre-urban areas, there is that program of the food bank so I, I will encourage it, uh, particularly to say that those who are given with a responsibility, they must really be fair and frank and honest so that the food which is coming to the food bank go to the targeted group. Also in the process, mechanism should be built in in order to identify the targeted group for them to be empowered so that they can graduate from the food bank and to become self-sustaining. So that is the program. And when it comes to rural poverty, uh, particularly in the areas where there is uh, a possibility for crop production, uh, we, we have really to work on supporting uh, the community there to increase their crop production, particularly when there is rain, uh, they will be supported. Uh, for example, uh, we know the number is many, but efforts will be made uh, depends uh, up to what level we can get. Uh, some of them can give can be given some seeds, fertilizers, 
and maybe also assisted with the plowing uh, because uh, when you people can feed themselves then you are addressing poverty and then the third thing is the overall development uh, programs uh, we have set ourselves as part of poverty eradication to industrialize our country so we have really to look as to how the public and the private sector can work together in order to grow our economy so that uh, we can uh, industrialize particularly paying attention to value addition both in terms of agriculture as well as in uh, other resources namibia being a mineral based because it's only when you are adding value that you'll be able to create the necessary jobs and when people have their jobs then you are addressing poverty so those are some of the issues that uh, as uh, the president has already started working on them and uh, as a vice president uh, i'll be also closely watching uh, so that uh, i can provide my advice and then take up uh, any other responsibilities that the president can assign to me as it clearly stipulated in the Swapo Party Constitution. Honorable, uh, how do you respond to questions on your ability to handle the position of international relations, Deputy Prime Minister, and the position of Swapo uh, Vice President? Anyway, I, I don't know. I, I find it very difficult to assess my own abilities. Uh, but uh, I, I, I must tell you that uh, I'm not working alone in these offices. Uh, and uh, the office of the vice president is not a full-time job. There is only one political position at the national level in Swapo, which is a full-time job, which is that of the secretary general. And the secretary general is also assisted by full-time job of all 14 regional coordinators as well as 14 uh, regional mobilizers and district coordinators so with the staff i'm having in the ministry of international relations and the staff assisting also at the office of the prime minister where as you know i have a specific assignment of uh, overseeing the implementation of the disaster and risk management law uh, there is a very competent staff there whom i'm providing political leadership just as i'm doing with the staff in the minister of international relations and cooperation so with that support the team i'm having uh, I, i'm sure we'll be able to provide the necessary services to the people of namibia in uh, both uh, being in the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, in the office of international relations, and uh, I'll be able to assist uh, the President in his work as uh, the President of Swapo Party, whom I know that much of the administration work has to be done by the Secretary General, who's the full-time employee of the, of, of the party. Now that the Congress is over, how difficult will it be to unite Swapo Party? after all these visible marks of disunity and, and political infighting? I don't know where the political infighting uh, some people are seeing, and I cannot see where Swapo is not united. Uh, of course, there were people who, who were contesting for positions, be it the position of the president, Vice President, Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, Central Committee, and Political Bureau. But now that uh, elections are done and democracy has taken its course, earlier on I've mentioned to you that my experience in the Swapo part is that democracy is getting its root and our members are really accepting that the reality of the democracy that we have set ourselves. So from the time the Congress started until the end, when the results were announced, there is nothing that is telling me that SWAPO is divided. I, I don't know whether you have followed, 
uh, when the returning officer invited the, all the candidates, particularly those who were contesting for the top four positions, and the president gave an acceptance speech which has reflected the views of all the winning candidates, each of the candidates who did not made it were given a chance to say something. And uh, they have all committed themselves to work with the elected leaders. They all commit themselves to work in strengthening the Swapo party. And the code on Swapo members, including those who are supporting them, to work with the elected leadership. So I don't know where the issue of Swapo need to be united after the, 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 the Congress because there was no political infighting. What was there was a campaign. And whenever you have more than one people who are contesting for a position, there must be a campaign. And there must be people supporting one and the other. That is uh, what is it. But once the elections are over, they are over. So uh, for me, I'm just saying that uh, we are moving forward in continuing to strengthen our party. Because uh, all the time, you can never satisfy to say our party now is strong. It must continue to be strengthened. Because some members, natural justice takes its course. You also want to bring in some more members. You have always to match with the time. And that's exactly what we are doing. Can you say that? The rough exchange of what we have witnessed in the campaign is uh, evidence of in, inner party democracy or anonymity. Anyway, I, I, I think, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, you know, when, when you are also dealing with people, uh, p people are different. Uh, people are completely different, and people can say things differently. So the, 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 the only issue is who is receiving the message. So, and uh, it's, um, th there were those words, uh, exchange, you say exchange, but maybe not exchange, uh, because there was no really word exchange, uh, because uh, each one was talking wherever you are, so you did not hear the people exchanging words, but uh, th there was just uh, statements, campaign statements which were made. Uh, but uh, oh, oh, it's... Uh, it's democracy we are talking about, but uh, we have also to accept that uh, when we are accessing, accessing our democracy, we, 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 we have also to have our own feelings. But nevertheless, as I said earlier, the campaign is over, and when the results were announced, each one accepted, and we say we are going to move forward. And I think uh, uh, every step of your life is a learning process. And I think uh, a, a, a everyone must be given, a, must take an opportunity really to learn and not just to make things difficult, which do not uh, necessarily to be made difficult. Okay. Um, how do you intend to fund the promises which the president made in his campaign to re during these uh, economic conditions? <laughs> First of all, the president has not made any new promises during the campaign leading to the Congress. The president simply emphasized, emphasized what SWAP has set for herself, particularly when we were preparing for the 2014 elections. If you go through the publication that the president has published it was simply elaborating and summarizing what is in in Swapo election manifesto. And remember, when the Swapo election manifesto was adopted and Swapo won the election in 2014, that Swapo election manifesto was then formally presented to the government and the government integrated it into the government development plans. So if you look into NDP5, it is talking to the Swapo Election Manifesto. If you look at the Harambe Prosperity Plan, it is talking to the Swapo Election Manifesto. However, 
there are some issues which are specific to the Swapo party, but those programs, they are already being implemented by the party. So, for example, when we talk about documenting the party history, uh, having the database of party members, those programs, they are there and they have to be funded accordingly as budgeted by Swapo party. While those are of national nature, they are to be budgeted and to be funded from the national budget through the treasury because all the programs are based on what the SWAPO has told the Namibian people before elected SWAPO in 2014. So it's those funds that are going to be used to implement those programs. This campaign has been criticized for its intensity and appeared as if there were two opposition political parties contesting. Can you say that it was a healthy campaign? Who is saying that? I want to know who is challenging that and uh, let that who said it to say it. Of course, I mentioned earlier that wherever you have two who are contesting, yes, they must be uh, groups who are supporting this one and the other. So that is why we reject anything that can make an impression that this is a discussion not within the Swapo party. We have been making it very clear, the president has made it very clear, that people must know that what is happening is a contestation within the party and not a contestation outside the party. It could be it's unfortunate if some people are taken it that way, but the good thing is it's not holding. So the majority of party members understood it and they are seeing it that this was a contestation within the party and not a contestation of opposition parties. You indicated that your team would, would be the one to solve the economic troubles. What new proposals will you bring on the table to heal the economy? Yes, uh, I, I, I have mentioned, if I, we, we, we have mentioned this, and uh, as I say that uh, the, w w what is already happening in this country, uh, the current government, guided by the head of state, has already put in place measures that will enable us to recover from the world economic recession. Uh, you recall that there are these rating agencies like the Moody's, the, what they are, they, are, they, they, they are rating us. But uh, we are moving forward and the recovery is coming. There are measures which have been taken like cutting uh, expenditures and so on, but also to make each and every Namibian responsible. Uh, I think uh, every Namibian, whether in the public sector or in the private sector, has a responsibility. Uh, when the world economic um, system was so high and everything looked so rosy, uh, we have been very careless. And I think now that we are all realizing we should try not to be careless in our management of whatever is in our hand. Uh, for example, if you are a private sector, don't try to take advantage of the public sector. If you know the service you are providing to the government will cost you two dollars, ask it two dollars, don't ask it five dollars. That is not fair for the system, neither for yourself, nor for your neighbor. So that's why we say everybody is responsible. And those who are in the public service, we have to scrutinize so that I know exactly that the $2 I'm being asked is what it's worth the service I'm receiving. And we can even compare with other countries in the neighborhood. You have a country like Botswana which we have the same economy based on the same product, 
diamond, uh, beef, the population more or less the same. Now, if they are building a road, what type of material they are using? How much are they paying for a kilometer? And how much am I paying in Namibia? If I'm paying more, why should I pay more? If we are using maybe even the same contractor, using the same material. So these are the responsibilities that we are all having. If you have to buy to work over time, why should you have persistently working over time? How do you make use of the eight hours that are given to you? Is that really over time? Or you are trying to, 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 to pretend working over time so that you have more extra money and in that way you are drying your government. Th those might look small, but they can be big. And then in terms of big tenders, what are we talking about? So those are some of the responsibility. We all have a responsibility. And the president is asking the mind change. Corruption is being talked about in this country, but it's something difficult to prove, something difficult to prove. But if each and every Namibian decide in your own wisdom and say, I am not going to rob anybody, I am not going to rob this government, I'm telling you, we are going to move. We have enough resources for ourselves. We just need not to be selfish. We just need to think one another. If everything was done without anybody trying to be ahead of the others, things could be different. Of course, we have, doing, we, have, we have done well in so many things, but we could do better. And that's the time we say, let us do better. And that's why we say we can solve that problem. When we were talking to the people, we say, you are going to elect us, but don't leave us. Don't put us there and remove the ladder. Be with us. When we were saying that, we were saying, each one of you, commit yourself to the development of this country. Then we will be able to do it. We don't have a problem that cannot be solved. All of them can be solved. But everybody must play a role. Each one must be honest to yourself and to your people. So that is what we are doing. The president cannot do it alone. No matter what good words he can make, if we cannot reform our attitude, our mind, the way we do things, as civil servants, use that whole time to do what is expected from you. Provide the service quick so that things can roll. These are the things we are talking about. Uh, the Swabo party having achieved the 50-50 gender balance in all its structure from, from top four the Politburo Central Committee up to the National Assembly recently. Is it, is it a rare achievement for the whole of Africa? And what does this gender balance mean for the, for the party and the country? Yeah, to my knowledge, <laughs> it's only the Swab Party that is having a 50-50% in their constitution and it's being implemented. And uh, it, uh, it's something to learn from. And uh, it's not unique to Namibia to become an example. If you recall, in 1990, when we passed our constitution, it was held by many countries, and many countries start copying it. So I, I'm expecting some political parties uh, to start copying the, the Swapo Party constitution. Now, the beneficiary is the whole Namibian nation. We are all benefiting. I know the change is always hard. And particularly to those who were more favored by the old system, you realize that this time around, my fellow male really have lost the out. And that is because the majority of SWAP members of the Central Committee were men. And when the 50-50% comes in, it will be men who have to lose out and more women comes in. But I'm sure that when we go to the next Congress, because now we got used, we will see the balance. 
So that is really, I, I fully understand you are having many of men who have been long time in the central committee or in the leaders of swap or losing, but there was no choice. Because men being in the old central committee, in order to create space for new women to come in, so that we have a 50-50, men have to lose. But that is not the end of the world. They are members of the party, they are citizens of this country, and there are so many opportunities in this country where one can make a contribution both to the party and to the development of the country. So what they need to do is just not to feel, not to feel bad, to feel rejected, but to accept the reality and pick up and go on. There's a lot they can do for the party and for the country. They need just to think out of the box. Politics is a good thing, but it's not the only thing one can do. But you cannot only do it when you are in the leadership. You can do it as a member of the party. Thank you for talking to the villager. Thank you very much, villager. And uh, since this is Christmas time, I want to wish your viewers a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I know it's a time for many of us celebrating, going to our families, to our friends. There will be weddings, there will be parties. But there are two things that I want your viewers to know. One, the, our environment is the only asset we have that we need to take care of for it to take care of us. So I'm asking Namibians not to litter. In your car, carry something where you drop all the bottles, all the cans, all the plastics, all the papers that you are using. And when you reach your destination, drop it to a destination area. Don't throw papers, don't throw bottles, don't throw tins, don't throw plastics. Plastics are even danger to our animals and to ourselves. To our animals, when your livestock eat plastics, they just stuck in until they die. To ourselves, when it rains, even in areas where water cannot stay, because there are plastics, those plastics, they contain the water and become breeding places for mosquitoes. And that's how we get malaria. So we should not litter. Whether you are in a wedding, whether you have a party, please have those black or yellow bags and put everything there. Don't throw around your field or wherever you are traveling. Let us keep Namibia clean so that our environment can take care of ourselves. Second is our driving. Our roads are good, but they are meant for us to be comfortable, but not for us to send ourselves to the grave or to cripple ourselves. Make sure that you check your car. Everything that you are told, your tires and everything must be checked before you start your journey. Make sure you do not overload because the weight of the car should balance with the engine. Because if you overweight and the balance of what you carry does not balance with the engine, that's how the cars can overturn. And don't consume alcohol when you know you are the one who's going to drive. Because that's where you can make serious mistakes and become a danger to yourself, to your passenger, and to the other road users. And 
please, when you are on the road, be patient. Be patient because there might be animals crossing. There might be others who did not comply with the rules. And then their car got problems you must be able to handle. So please let us enjoy Christmas and New Year. But we should come back safe. And let us make a record of reducing road accident in our roads. If we can make it to zero, that will be the best for all of us. And we could even make a national party for that. So that's my message to your viewers, to your listeners, as I'm wishing them a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year with their families and come back to your work with more refreshed mind so that we have the year 2018, a year of production. So that's my message. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.